Hello, my name is Marat. I'm a PhD student in medicinal chemistry. First of all, I want to say thank you. Now we have over 100 subscribers. I really appreciate all of your comments and feedback as it helps me to stay motivated and create new videos. As I promised in my last video, today we are going to discuss CRISPR pattern war. And let's start with definition of pattern and why it's important. So pattern is a legal document that is given to inventor of some new process or new equipment and it gives this inventor exclusive rights for a period of years. In the CRISPR field, this pattern is issued for 20 years, and everyone who is using this technology within this period of time required to pay some loyalties to a patent holder. And this is why it's so important to understand who holds the rights for CRISPR technologies. Right now, there are two opposite sides. On one side, we have Doudna and Charpentier, Nobel Prize winners, who founded CRISPR Therapeutics and Intellia. And on the other side, we have Feng Zhang and David Liu, who founded Beam Therapeutics and Editors. As of April 2021, patent dispute is far from being over, and it's only going to escalate when CRISPR drugs will get FDA approval and start making money. Then this patent issue will come back with new force. So let's talk about it now. Before we start the video, I just want to remind you that this is not financial advice and I'm just sharing my personal opinion as I would share it with my friends. In order to understand this patent dispute, we have to establish timeline for CRISPR development. And let's start in the year 2011. In this year, it was two main events. First, Doudna and her postdocs from the lab founded Caribou Biosciences. And the second event is Feng Zhang, who is currently co-founder of Beam and Editors, started working on CRISPR therapeutics application to human cells. In June 2012, Doudna and Charpentier submitted their paper to science, and this paper was groundbreaking, because for the first time it described exactly how CRISPR worked, but they described it in a test tube, and they didn't apply it to human cells, and this turned out to be a big mistake for them later on. Meanwhile, Feng Zhang, who started working on application of CRISPR to human cells back in 2011, he read this article and it helped him a lot. So he intensified his work after he'd seen this Doudna Charpentier article and soon after, just in a couple of months, he was able to submit his own research paper in October to the same journal that Doudna and Charpentier published their findings. It's interesting to note that George Church, another co-founder of Editors, submitted his findings about application of CRISPR to human cells just a few weeks afterwards to the same journal as Fang Zhan. After George Church submitted his paper to Science, he notified Doudna about this, and he also mentioned that Fang Zhan submitted his findings a bit earlier. So Doudna was feeling pressure, and she started pushing her postdocs even harder to work extra hours and try to publish at least something, even if it's not complete, to another journal, and she decided to pick some less known journal, eLife, in order to push this a bit faster, because normally it takes quite a bit of time to go through editors, to go through reviewers, so she decided to go for this less known journal to speed it up. Now we're in the beginning of 2013, and Feng Zheng and George Church papers were published in the same issue of Science, and it's funny because they appear exactly one after another in the issue. And since it's the same findings, it's kind of silly, you know, find them exactly one on top of another. And soon afterwards, Doudna paper also was published on eLife, but it was later. And this is why priority about who modified human cells with CRISPR was given to Feng Zhang. And later this year, Feng Zhang founded Editor's Medicine and Emmanuel Charpentier founded CRISPR Therapeutics. And this is two first public companies in the CRISPR field. The whole story is way more complicated than I just described, because I excluded some important people just to simplify it and make it easier to understand. But if you want to know more about this, you can read full explanation in the book Code Breaker that was published last month about Doudna and CRISPR in general. And for me, as a CRISPR investor, I find that it's really interesting to know how it's applied, and science behind this invention. So I highly recommend all of you to read this book. 
So now we're up to speed with key milestones in CRISPR development and we can go back to our days. The latest court hearings about application of CRISPR technology in the USA was back in September of 2020. And during these hearings, Feng Zhang and Broad Institute, his alma mater, kind of won. But it's not final decision because still Doudna and Charpentier will appeal in the future. Uh, but for now, this win means that they're giving him priority about application of CRISPR to human cells, while Charpentier and Doudna have priority for other type of applications, like in diagnostics, in agriculture, or in some other areas that CRISPR could be applied to. The main point how Doudna and Charpentier are planning to appeal this court decision is that it doesn't take a genius to replicate this success and apply CRISPR to human cells. Because just six months after the initial publication in 2012 in Science, already several research groups were able to replicate application of CRISPR to human cells. So they're trying to insist that it's not groundbreaking, that it's not something revolutionary, that it's not as important as Broad Institute and Feng Zhang trying to pretend. But on the other hand, Feng Zhang is convinced that this is important and this is essential for this whole application. If you want to apply it to human cells, then only you can think of medicines, think of curing diseases. And seems to be that Feng Zhang for now, they have upper head in the US court. But we have to take into account that each region or country, they have their own specific pattern rules. And for instance, in the European Union, Charpentier and Downer, they won all the rights for CRISPR to application in human cells, in agriculture, basically everything. Same story happening in Japan, in Australia, in New Zealand, in some other countries. I didn't check all of them, but it seems to be that Feng Zhang is dominating in the US, while the rest of the world, they kind of follow the rules that Nobel Prize was given to Doudna and Charpentier, and it seems logical that they should be given a priority because they developed this technique in the first place and application to human cells doesn't seem to be so important to European Union or Australia. So, as I said in the beginning, this is far from being over and it's only going to get intensified when actual revenue will start coming to pockets of companies that use CRISPR to cure diseases or modify crops or apply it in any other way. Because when revenue start to kick in, these hearings will intensify because this will be already time when somebody has to pay royalties for using these patterns. And if it's going to be one or the other side, it can affect a lot the earnings. So and just to stress it again, why we're talking about this? Why these patterns are so important? So we're talking about 20 years of exclusive rights. So can you imagine that for 20 years, somebody will be getting royalties for basically doing nothing. So just like I invented something and other people start using my invention and I'm getting money for 20 years that people basically just using what I patented in the beginning. And this will be definitely reflected on earnings for companies that hold in these patterns. If you enjoyed this video so far, please leave a like and subscribe. And if something is not clear, just ask me in the comments and I'll do my best to respond to it. Now I will try to give my personal take on this story. And I'm definitely supporting Doudna and Charpentier because I believe that they were actual inventors. They describe how CRISPR works in a test tube and this is crucial to understand how it works in general. And without this research about how it works in a test tube, Feng Zhang wasn't able to replicate the success in a human cell because he was missing information on some basic points how CRISPR works. But at the same time, I understand Feng Zhang. He was a young guy, barely 30 back then, and he was just trying to invent some new cool technologies. And in science, to be honest, it's always a competition, especially in such a high topics like CRISPR. Many people were working on this that I didn't mention in this video. One guy in Lithuania, he basically discovered this approximately at the same time as Doudna Charpentier, but because he was from Lithuania and nobody cares about these smaller countries, he wasn't from prestigious university, so he submitted his findings, but they were not accepted by journal immediately. 
because they were asking some additional questions, reviewers were not happy. So this is what you have to go through when you're going from small university or from less known country. Another reason why I'm cheering for Daunay Charpentier is that Feng Zhang didn't include anyone in his patent application. He didn't even include his main contributor that he started this work with. And if you compare list, I will put it on the screen, from his publication with list of names on patent application, you will see that he didn't include a single person from his lab. And for me, it's a really shady move that you kind of try to take this glory all to yourself without actually appreciating work done by some other people in his lab. And if you compare this to Doudnay Charpentier patent application, you can see that they included their postdocs to this patent as a co-inventors. And for me, as a researcher myself, it's so good to see that Professor you know, like he is not trying to rip off their students, but actually trying to share this glory. If you're talking about the future of this patent dispute, I believe it will only intensify this time. And for me, one of the reasons why I'm saying this is that Doudna founded company Mammoth Biosciences. And Feng Zhang founded another company called Sherlock Biosciences. And these two companies, they also rivals because they both produce diagnostic tools based on CRISPR technology. So I believe that this will be another whole story of these patent disputes. It could be some other patents involved because they're using, again, similar technologies or maybe even the same technologies. And it's all messed up. Another reason for me to believe that this patent dispute will only intensify is recent developments that happened in March when Intelli announced that they have base editor capabilities in their portfolio. And base editor used to be exclusive feature of Beam Therapeutics. And this is why Beam Therapeutics is so highly valued because based editing, it seems to be that it's a next step in CRISPR. So, and what happened that Intelli during their presentation they didn't acknowledge David Liu, they didn't acknowledge any previous work done in based editing field. So what happened next is that David Liu went on Twitter and published, I would say, angry tweet about how he's disappointed that Intelli didn't mention him, not even him, he was more worried about postdocs because postdocs were people who actually did whole hard work on the bench and they invent this whole technology that is now called based editing. I will put link to this tweet in the description and you can find all the rest of the materials there as well that I used in this video. It seems to be like based editors will be a next chapter in CRISPR patent war. Because this is something new, Intelli is not referring to beam therapeutics at all. So they will definitely try to patent it. And I'm excited to see if this will be the case or not. Because if they will be granted patent, I believe next day beam therapeutics will file something against them in court. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. My next video will be about editors. I guess you've seen that editors dropped down significantly and now they 15% down just on Friday alone. They were down compared to other CRISPR stocks quite a lot. But after Friday, it seems to be like too cheap to be true. And I will try to dig deeper to see if it's actually that bad that everyone is selling or probably it's a good time to buy. Okay, see you in the next one.